to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. Someone's life is changing, my goodness. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends to the God of all flesh. You're my God and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. let me have your attention we're about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit and with it challenge ourselves let me give you an advice never be ashamed when the Word of God comes sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame when minister Frecker was here he said we should lift our hands like children that is the attitude he said let the little children come to me it says do not forbid them for for such the kingdom of God requires childlike approach I come to you with my heart open and he vets you in light of his truth then you repent repentance is not a word for sinners It's the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns It's called repentance Number one, the first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom, write it please, is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience. Of Jesus experientially or in experience. Colossians chapter 1, chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15. Oh dear, let's see if we can hurry up and just walk on these scriptures. Colossians 1 verse 3. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Keep reading. Verse 2. It says, Set your affections. He's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life. Set your affection. Something about your affection reveals your level of growth set your affection on things above he never said don't have the things of the earth but set your affection when your obsession becomes on money on titles on i must make it i must achieve it it is good to aspire to be great but if that's what controls your heart <clears throat> you are far from growth set your affection let's hurry up on things above not on things of the earth verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4, very quickly I'll run through it. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory. Uh-huh. Now, mortify therefore your members. That means you have a responsibility. Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil. What's that word? And covetousness which is idolatry verse verse 6 it says for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience 7 in the which you also walk in some time 
when ye lived in them eight but now put off all these believers are we together maybe you should read the rest from here one anger number two number three number four number five Nigerians repeat number five dear wonderful citizens of this great country reveal try number five again number verse nine La, hi, ah, do I say this one now <laughs> don't worry we are together God is helping us we are growing in the name of Jesus Christ he says lie not to one another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds verse 10 and have put on a new man hallelujah that new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him verse 11 we're reading to 15 where there is neither yoruba nor hausa nor south south nor northerner nor middle beltan it says but christ is all and in all let me tell you this you really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory it shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says you are behaving like them where are you from then he helps you to accurately get where you are coming from it is proof that you are not transformed you should be so transformed we we should be we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory that when you tell people where you are coming from they say it's not true how come you are so refined you tell them the process is called growth growth called out of every tribe and tongue and nation into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory let's finish up the scripture put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved uh-huh bowels of mercy uh-huh kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another it says if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do ye 14 it says above all these things put on love charity there is love he calls it the bond of maturity the zenith of your maturity we're coming there 15 the last verse it says and let the peace of god garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and in all that you do do not forget to be thankful so ingratitude is proof that you are a child are we blessed write this scripture we may not read it second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 it tells us we can add to our faith certain spiritual qualities it says add to your faith virtue virtue means moral excellence add to virtue knowledge since they projected it let's just read on verse 6 add to knowledge self-control or temperance add to self-control patience add to patience godliness seven add to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love this love thing again is god helping us the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, popular scripture and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. While I was studying for this meeting, if we can have it, um, if we can have it, give us the Passion Translation. Is that possible? The Passion Translation. Very powerful. The Passion Translation. If, if we can't get that, that that's all right. The Passion Translation. It puts it in a very, very exceptional and interesting way. That's all right. You can, you can just give us the version we have if the Passion Translation is not there. But it's, it's really very powerful. I just thought that if we look at it... Um, okay, yeah, let's just go back to King James. Apologize for that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Passion Translation says... The, the, it says the fruit which the Holy Spirit walks out through a recreated human spirit is love expressed in its various forms 
then it now begins to say joy peace very very powerful are we together but let's work with what we have the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit that means the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in a recreated human spirit is love and um, in its the original translation is not just love joy peace it's just love one word love but that that love expresses itself in joy are we together peace so joy is a subset of love peace is a subset of love long suffering or patience gentleness goodness faith 23 meekness temperance it says against such there is no law there is no prohibition to walking in this your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ when people look at you they should remember Jesus not you the more they see you you should be the clearest representation of Jesus that they can see not by preaching something about the dexterity of the formation of Christ in you should make people desire Jesus are we together it is my prayer all the time that Christ be formed in me the formation of Christ it is my prayer that I will not just be a man of God who is preaching but that at least my life becomes a worthy representation that you can look at your life and say my God this man truly is a reflection of Jesus it's a noble comment it's more than saying you're a successful man you are beautiful in all your ways that's what happens when you become like him you are beautiful in all your ways character we must trust God by the grace of God to be men and women of solid character. If your preaching is the only thing that reveals you as a Christian, you are not a solid Christian. If your seed is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, if your praying in tongues is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, something is wrong. Look at those who follow Jesus. Even when they tried to deny him, they had been so transformed they looked at them and said no 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 you are lying that you don't know him but th there is something can you be that transformed that no matter how you pretend someone will say kai it looks like you are a pastor you say well I, i'm just i'm just they say no, no 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 men shall call you ministers of our god That in your office the moment they want to bribe as soon as you enter they stop you don't say anything you don't judge blessings to everybody this is the day the Lord has made your presence becomes such an inconvenience to darkness character it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. It all belongs to you my heart, my life, and everything that I have. It all belongs to you. Oh. Let's hurry up. We're wrapping up. Number two, the second biblical index to measure your spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension. Of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom index number two your depth of comprehension your depth of knowledge your depth of understanding of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom the degree to which you have an understanding of the principles that govern this kingdom is the degree to which you are matured spiritually Look up, please. The Bible says in Matthew 25, when you read from verse 14, the parable of the talents, 
I'll just pick one or two things there. Give us verse 14, please. Matthew 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, watch this, and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. It says he gave unto one, how many talents? Help me, five talents. Number two to the other, two talents. And then the third one. It says, Unto every man according to his several ability. He did not give them according to his love for them meaning that he had watched them for a while and the end of the story shows he was correct because the man with five was the most responsible the one the man with five had a lot to fight he had pride to fight being the one with the highest talent he overcame pride and was still focused and diligent the man with two had jealousy to fight because knowing there was somebody above him he conquered jealousy and still produced that. The man with one, you bury seeds, not talents. And he buried this, the talent and came. You can see that he was already offended. When they asked for him, he says, you are a hard man. You like reaping where you didn't sow. And so I thought to even pity you, I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, you are a wicked, number one, Number two, unprofitable servant. Hallelujah. God gives unto men according to their ability that has come from their growth. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Here's the scripture. Not according to his power, according to the power that works in us. The dam brings water, but the, the amount of water that ends up in your bucket is according to the size of the tap, not according to the potential of the dam. You can turn your tap just once and it will be a drop and it will take you almost a day to have a bucket full. Is that true? And someone can turn the tap very fast and within a minute the bucket is full. The problem is not the dam. The dam has the potential to fill as many buckets according to the power that works in us, the capacity. The day I found this, I found out that the limitation in the dispensing of the grace of God is not just God's problem. There is something about my capacity that needs to be built so that I can host superior dimensions of His presence and it became my pursuit to enlarge Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. Jesus lamented two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible. Number one was at John Lazarus' tomb when he wept because of his compassion. Second was this over Jerusalem. Three reasons I meant to say. See the third, well he, the Bible says he cried, he was sweat, but it was like drops of blood. It says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? 42. Saying, if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto your peace it says but now they are hid from your eyes jesus wept over jerusalem and said jerusalem jerusalem that's the original translation if you had known even in this your time the things that pertain to your peace peace there means your wholeness but now they are hid from your eyes we must contend for spiritual truth listen to me we must contend for dimensions of truth that equip us and help us to be mature to manifest the fullness of the life and the power of God. Number three, the third biblical index that measures spiritual growth, write it down, is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life. We know that you are matured to the degree to which we can see the tangible manifestation of the power and the ability of the spirit in your life. The outworkings of the ability of the spirit of God in your life. Please write this down. I think I confused two scriptures. Let me give you a scripture that had to do with depth of comprehension. 
first corinthians 4 and verse 20 it says be not children in understanding i'm seeing two scriptures i omitted here be not children in understanding first corinthians 14 20 be not children in understanding write it down please then write down colossians 1 verse 9 the bible says paul was praying over the church in Colossae. that's over point two now that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will wisdom and spiritual understanding hallelujah the outworkings of his power in your life second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible says but in a great house look at me please it is not the vessels that make the house great it is the builder even though there are all kinds of vessels it's still called a great house but in a great house please keep the scripture there it says there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of clay he said some vessels are destined unto honor some vessels are unto dishonor what is the condition verse 2 if a man will purge himself from this prune yourself from this you shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work let me tell you this by the grace of God I know a bit about the power of God I know a bit about the anointing of the Holy Spirit I have seen the power and the grace of God I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing I can tell you this the vessel is a very important subject as far as impartation and the administration of spiritual power is concerned the vessel can make the oil look small in second kings chapter 4 the woman who was owing her husband died the bible says the prophet came and said what do you have in your house she said nothing that little jar that could feed her was listening to the conversation too because the anointing is a living thing so the anointing was hearing and saying you are calling me small and the prophet said you don't know the problem is not the oil the problem is the kind of vessel holding it go and borrow vessels expand he said borrow not a few when she borrowed it now said to pour the oil the oil began to multiply to assume the shape of the vessel the anointing will only be as effective as the maturity of the vessel administering it the outworkings of the power of God there has to come a time in your life whether you are in ministry or not active ministry like we know you cannot remain with God growing spiritually truly and then get to a point where the outworkings of the power of God is not visible in your life it's impossible someday you should be able to speak over someone and it and does change someday you should be able to come into your family help him please there has to be the reality listen to me please if you're a man of god here let me tell you it's not all about power manifestation but there has to be a, an investment of the spirit upon your life there must be a signature of the spirit maturity then your world become like the words of god that lady wearing black i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head yes that lady looking at me i stretch my hands right now something is happening to you help her please i'm seeing oil being poured on her this is what happens this is the place of encounter
there must be an effulgence. I vowed a vow to God that if I ever meet a man and I hold you and I pray for you, I will go for a retreat if your life does not change. I'm not bragging. This is how to be a blessing. Acts chapter 10 and verse 13. How God anointed Jesus. Not just that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about. It takes more than a good heart. It takes more than a compassionate heart. Our loved ones will continue to go down with us just being compassionate. It takes power. Take power to your family. Take power to your business. Take power to your ministry. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost. Pastor, it will take more than a good sermon to bring members. It will take the power of the Holy Ghost. There are real demons. Demons are real. Demons are real. Politics are real. The Messianic prophecy says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me listen to me one testimony that was shared here was produced by the power of the holy spirit your bible says his divine power it says according as his divine power has given us the giver is his divine power if you stand and watch doors like that you will watch it forever you will need to obtain power from on high samson remained helpless provided there was no power but when grace came upon his life you see so when you come to church like this don't see this strange is it not written in your bible that well peter yet speak these things it says the holy ghost fell on them that had him so you go back home with an experience and like the psalmist you can say i was glad when they said to me let us go how could your life remain the same my brothers and my sisters it's impossible not the god of the bible the power of the Holy Ghost I believe in power I've had the opportunity in ministry to see what power can do to lives political careers it takes power to enthrone kings it's not just prophecy when you speak there must be grace that backs it I am a man under authority the centurion said and I can tell one go and he goeth the power is and he goeth not that I said go I say go and he goeth come and he cometh so you say open and it opens close and it closes listen may grace come on your life this night that many of you will return back home and in the name of Jesus you will stand I'm speaking by the Spirit help them please I decree and declare you will go back home like the foxes of Samson, carrying supernatural power, power to dislodge the workings of darkness. In the name of, help that woman please, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down, we're wrapping up. Can I speak to you? Everything that has refused to work, by this time next week, I stand by the spirit and the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, I command it to begin to walk. I speak by the Spirit of God. Help, help that woman, please. Every response you should receive. You heard their testimonies. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. Every frustration over over your destiny. I release you from it now. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. This is Koinonia. Number four. The fourth and the last index for measuring your spiritual growth is called your love life. We're wrapping up. Hali Selema Shola Haskabranda Gadoziata.
I'm opening doors, opening doors. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I'm opening doors. You will think I'm joking, but you'll be surprised to see what happens. I am opening doors. This is what God is saying. I said before you, He says, an open door that no man can shut. I am opening doors. This God speaking to someone. I don't know who that person is, but you came here with hunger. I stand by the grace from heaven and I declare those doors, those doors be open for the sake of His Majesty. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Help that woman, please. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. Listen to me. Please, next week, don't come to church alone. Don't come to church alone. Don't leave your loved ones behind. No. Even if they will sit on the roof, let them sit there. One encounter with the power of God can open ages, chapters that have been closed. Hallelujah. We're wrapping up. We have about 10 minutes and we're done for tonight. Please be patient with me. Listen, please. The fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth according to scripture is your love life. When you read 1 John chapter 4, this is a very important subject. Your love life. Madam, that woman, come. No, 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 you, please, you don't have to stand up at random. Where are you coming from? What's your name? I'm hearing a name of Payemi. What's your name? Opeyemi. The Lord is saying I should tell you this week coming. This week you see coming. From Monday tomorrow. You will come and stand here. The way doors will open in your life. It will surprise you. I stretch my hands and I bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you drink of this grace and you return back with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Let's finish up. First John chapter 7. Chapter 4, please. Chapter 4 from verse 7. Let's hurry up, please. We're wrapping up. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Verse 8. It says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Keep verse 8. But the text is down to 21. It says, Whoever does not love, it is proof that you don't know God. No matter how you convince yourself, something about your love life, if you love God and hate men, you are not born again. Many people love Jesus only because they can't see him. If they see Jesus for one week, he will join all those they have hated. Love. I love him with all my heart. Let me tell you this. One of the secrets to the grace of God upon my life it's not just prayer and fasting alone. It is sincere love. God has given me that grace and it's been a prayer. Lord, may I not use people. May I not use members to make a name. Let, let them see the passion, the love. That whilst you are sleeping, I'm praying for you and I'm saying, Lord, lift them. Open doors for them. Huh? Not just coming to collect... Co Bless. My greatest joy is not my lifting. My greatest joy is your rising. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your love life. John 13 and verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you pray in tongues. Not when you preach well. Not when you share revelations. 13, 35, John. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another the first core value help that lady the first core value in this ministry is not power is love 
love is very powerful first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31 very interesting scripture as we seek to wrap up very powerful scripture never forget this for the rest of your life having discussed the manifestation the gifts of the spirit as charismatic as they are it says but covet earnestly the best gift and yet i show you after prophecy after word of knowledge after healing i show you a more excellent way 13 verse 1 what is the more excellent way the way to do it in love though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love i am become as a sounding brass oh dear i wish we can get the voice or that well for next time i'm sure that our media will help us with that i am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal it says verse 2 let's go to verse 2 now it says if i have the gift of prophecy and i understand all mysteries if you become this man people will look for you till they kill you you know all mysteries and prophecy and you have all knowledge you have all faith you can move mountains but you do not have love he says i am nothing look how little we weigh in the spirit without love in the physical they can be clapping apostle joshua selman but in the realm of the spirit you weigh so small verse 3 the bible says if i donate all my goods to feed the poor i give my body to be burned and i do not have love he says i gain nothing verse 4 let's hurry up please love is patient if it is true love love is kind if it is true love love does not envy nigerians love is not boastful it is not conceited verse 5 it says does not act improperly love is not selfish it's not easily provoked or easily angered does not keep a record of wrongs hmm. Verse 6, it says, finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. 7, we're almost there. It says, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8, this is the love you talk about. Love never fails. Now we can go back to KJV so that we can wrap it up. It says, verse 9, for we know in part love never fails listen to my message love never fails business people if the bible tells you there is something that does not fail look for it that means whatever is failing add love to it it will change the equation love never fails but whether there be prophecies they shall fail the most accurate of us is still limited whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away my goodness verse 9 he says for we know in part and we prophesy in part verse 10 but when that which is perfect is come that which is imperfect shall go away 11 he says when i was a child back to our scripture now let's go to verse 12 we've read that we have to rush it says for now we see through a glass darkly but face to face we know in part then we shall even know as we are known 13 and now there abided faith that moves mountains if you have faith in today's world you are a great mountain mover if you have hope there is no shame for you because hope has a way of eroding shame it says and of these three the greatest is love the greatest is not power the greatest is not signs and wonders the greatest is not prophecy and revelatory gifts the pro the greatest is not accuracy of the exegesis of doctrine those things are wonderful but according to divine rankings the zenith of your transformation is not knowledge is love love it is my desire that more than preaching that I will truly become a lover of God and a lover of men to love men to love men sincerely you are not spiritually growing to the degree to which you pile hate in your heart you have all kinds of black books no no tonight may be a word from the Lord and say look you need to pack up that nonsense you need to be light to fly 
when you are heavy these weights press you down it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight right and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us we're going to pray and ask the Lord to grant us grace to desire growth from the depth of your heart God is training us God is building us please rise up on your feet two prayer points tonight very quickly prayer point number one father grant me the grace the grace to grow intentionally lift your voice and begin to pray inside outside lift your voice and pray the grace to grow intentionally i am tired of this level in the spirit i desire to grow from today i make my spiritual growth an intentional pursuit there is a lot that depends on my growth hallelujah praise the lord the last prayer point father grant me the grace to reveal jesus from today through my life through all of these dimensions are we together now through my character through the dexterity of my spiritual understanding through the outworkings of the power of the holy spirit in my life and by the demonstration of love let men see christ exalted christ revealed in my life lift your voice and pray those outside pray overflows pray following online lift your voice and pray hallelujah praise the lord i'm about to make the altar call please be patient there are a few very important announcements i need to communicate before we wrap up for tonight but there are people here listening some of you came here you were invited some of you are in the overflows some outside some following online from whatever nation and you're saying apostle hearing you speak I cannot for sure say that Jesus is Lord of my life I have a desire for him but I don't seem to have truly found him Others are saying, one time I gave my life to Jesus, but as it is now, my life has gone haywire and I need to bring my life back to order. These two categories of people. Now, for all of the overflows and outside, you just move to your projector screen and then those in the main auditorium, I'd like you to run and come and stand here. It'll be my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus. I'll count one to five. Please, I'd like you to come. One. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Come to Jesus. God bless you. Win that war tonight. Win that war tonight. Win that war. God bless you. Keep coming. Don't be ashamed of anyone. No one condemns you. This is a house of love. Come. 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 He's giving you a new beginning. Come. All overflows move to your overflows look at these our wonderful children let's celebrate them come come minister Frecker taught us and he said if he's not in his presence and if it is not by his hand if it is not by his word it's not just don't let me have it you really can't have it You have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. If ever you were saved, there was your name. 
if you were lost your name was there there's nothing like being in between no if you are not saved you are not saved if you are not sure you are not saved I salute every single one of you listen until the day Jesus comes we will never stop participating in the global harvest we must sit with that souls come to Jesus every day someday when we're in heaven we're going to see these blessed people and they will look at us and say thank God thank God for clapping for me while I came for I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you came my dear ones look at me we're standing before Jesus not just Joshua Selman those following online those in the overflows let there be someone there to guide them I want to lead you to make this most noble prayer is greater than receiving an award is greater than receiving an employment letter is greater than rising up from a wheelchair this is the security of your eternal destiny lift your right hand high to the heavens pray this from the depth of your heart say after me Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you I have heard your word tonight I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I hand over my life to you and I receive your life in exchange be my Savior be my Lord be my King forever I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness I reign in life amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these precious ones they have become by their confession members of the family of heaven and it's an honor to welcome them to this family that so represents your voice and your counsel at this side of your kingdom I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Spirit may you become mighty men and women of the Spirit and I pray that the Lord himself will do wonders in and through your life in the name of Jesus Christ thank you very much now very quickly there's a counselor there are counselors waving a placard for you all of you I want you to please move in concert just follow um the counselors celebrate them as they go celebrate them as they go bless you darlings thank you hallelujah praise the lord now please listen just some very important announcements i have to welcome our first timers i sincerely apologize we're done in a moment but you need to hear this it's very important um by the grace of God, you've seen what God has done in the ministry. It is so overwhelming. We're opening up more doors for the workforce. The first time we opened, yes, thank you. Now, let me explain to you why many people are clapping. Because um, the first time we opened up doors for workforce, we had over 4,000 people. And we had to cut them down to about 10% of them. Uh, almost I think it was a work almost everybody here the size you know applied for it but now we're applying to specific departments the security and traffic control and then the the um, protocol and logistics department we also have ushers we need ushers you see how many people were flying up and down under the anointing we need a lot of ushers to help us now if you are interested by let's say three hours after tonight's service please go to our social media platforms especially our Facebook and Instagram platform can you project it for them to see please so that you can you can tender your application there three hours after the service it will be up just click and then put in your names we'll allow only two days for this that means by the end of Tuesday and Wednesday the doors will be closed 
and um, so you please write your name ushers those who want to be part of the ushering team those who want to be part of our protocol and logistics department those who want to be part of the security and traffic control praise the name of the lord we'll take them gradually please make sure you have um those down and then it will also the, the our global page that you have and you know you can also we'll make sure that it is there also so that you can click on it and then follow very quickly praise the name of the lord now i want to honor those who are coming here for the first time last week we were all first timers including me but now we're one week old so we're no longer first timers praise the name of the lord this is your first time worshiping with us here please i like you we're all standing but just wave your beautiful hands to jesus my good my goodness my goodness outside wave your hands all the overflows let's celebrate jesus for them thank you um now very quickly please keep your hands lifted every one of you a few officials will be handing to you our visitors card it's in two parts the first part is for your information it's it, your consumption it contains information about the ministry our activities what we stand for our mandate especially in this city please do well to tear the first half you can go home with it is yours um, is both a, an instrument for your edification and knowledge and also let it go with you as a mantle in the name of Jesus and then the second half will plead that you quickly our time is up but quickly would like you to feel it as um, let it be as clear as you can let it be very legible please feel it very quickly and then you can leave it on your desk there or pass it to an official that will be standing by your side uh, by next week we'll do well to do the welcome of visitors just somewhere in the middle of the service before i come up so that we can give you we'll give you room to be able to complete your forms we apologize for the pressure that is on you now but on behalf of jesus christ himself who is the apostle of the church and even over this commission we welcome you this is koinonia abuja and um, we thank god for what he's doing this is a family of people who truly love jesus christ and are passionate about seeing his kingdom come and replicating the fullness of his life we're here sundays 5 p.m do well to join us and your life will never be the same even if you have experienced don't come alone come with as many um, so that they can encounter jesus the least we can do for you now is to pray for you so all of us who are one week old we are going to stretch our hands towards every first timer you can find around or if or you can just pray for them if you can't see anyone let's just speak words of blessings while they complete their forms we bless you we bless you we decree and declare that you go from glory to glory you are part of a house of power a house of his presence a house of favor a house of wisdom let these virtues of the spirit go with you we bless you with the blessings of heaven we declare and decree that every challenge that came here with you it drops and lets you go in victory you walk in victory you live in victory you speak in victory in the name of Jesus Christ let the name of the Lord be exalted in Jesus name I pray amen and amen now by by next week um, by next week I'll have the time to share with you a vision that the Lord revealed to me there is something we are going to do as God revealed to me in this city is going to be six to ten hours of prayers non-stop in this city <laughs> praise the name of the lord so god put that will announce it hopefully by next we can structure it this is for the body of christ we need to shake the gates and let them know that the body of christ is alive and so we're going to be praying it's 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 not it's not a denominational thing at all and it's not going to interrupt the service it's not the regular service it probably may not even be here god will grant us grace for a strategic location and will stand and confront the altars over this city and say lift up your heads O ye gates hallelujah so i'd like you to prepare brace up god will grant us grace wherever he grants us grace to station ourselves we'll do that and have people is just going to be worship and prayer in the spirit and prophecy 
and no preaching at all it's just going to be drumming we're really going to be dissipating spiritual energy to settle certain things upon the soil of this land and then you will see doors open you will see believers come into the reality of their inheritance are we blessed please lift your hands and take the blessing as we wrap up in the name of jesus i declare that your week beginning from tonight is blessed you go in the power of the holy spirit your prayer life is on fire your word life is on fire next week sunday by this time return with your testimonies in the name of jesus i decree and declare that everything that has mocked god in your life it bows this week dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 